Hello and welcome to part 9 of our AZ305 exam practice question series. We are starting with question number 59. You plan to deploy an Azure database for MySQL flexible server named Server 1 to the East US Azure region. You need to implement a business continuity solution for Server 1. The solution must minimize downtime in the event of a failover to a paired region. What should you do? Your options are create a read replica, store the database files in Azure premium file shares, implement geo redundant backup, configure native MySQL replication. Folks, the correct answer here is option C implement geo redundant backup. The geo redundant backup feature in Azure database for MySQL allows automatic backups to be stored in a different geographic region. In the event of a region wide service disruption, you can restore the database from the geo redundant backup, which helps minimize downtime. Other options do not provide business continuity in case of regional failures. Question number 60. You need to design a highly available Azure SQL database that meets the following requirements. Failover between replicas of the database must occur without any data loss. The database must remain available in the event of a zone outage. Costs must be minimized. Which deployment option should you use? Your options are Azure SQL Managed Instance Business Critical, Azure SQL Managed Instance General Purpose, Azure SQL Database Business Critical, Azure SQL Database Serverless. Folks, you should use Azure SQL Database Business Critical to meet the given requirements. Azure SQL Database Business Critical tier offers high availability using always on availability groups. This ensures that failover between replicas can occur without any data loss. It provides zone redundancy, allowing the database to remain available even in the event of a zone outage. Although it has a higher cost than some other tiers, it provides the necessary features for the given requirement. Next question. You plan to migrate app 1 to Azure. You need to recommend a network connectivity solution for the Azure storage account that will host the app one data. The solution must meet the security and compliance requirements. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are Microsoft peering for an express route circuit, Azure public peering for an express route circuit, a service endpoint that has a service endpoint policy, a private endpoint. And friends, the correct answer in this case is option D, a private endpoint. Private endpoint allows you to connect to Azure services like storage account via private IP from within your virtual network. This ensures that traffic between your resources and the storage account stays completely within the Microsoft backbone network, avoiding exposure to the public internet. Security and compliance are enhanced because access can be restricted to only specific private networks. Question number 62. You plan to deploy multiple instances of an Azure web app across several Azure regions. You need to design an access solution for the app. The solution must meet the following replication requirements. Support rate limiting, Balance requests between all instances. Ensure that users can access the app in the event of a regional outage. And the solution you choose is you use Azure front door to provide access to the app. Does this meet the goal? You need to tell whether this is right or wrong. And friends, utilizing Azure front door is a correct solution. Azure front door combined with web application firewall policy will achieve all that. Azure front door balances requests across multiple regional instances of the web app, ensuring efficient distribution of traffic. It also allows you to configure rate limiting policies to manage traffic spikes and prevent abuse. 
In case of a regional outage, front door automatically redirects traffic to the next available instance in a healthy region, ensuring continuous availability and front door also performs health probes to monitor the status of each instance and routes traffic only to healthy endpoints. So folks, I hope you now understand why I have chosen this as the correct solution. But if you still have any doubts, please post them in the comment section. Next question. You have 12 on-premise data sources that contain customer information and consist of Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, and Oracle databases. You have an Azure subscription. You plan to create an Azure Data Lake storage account that will consolidate the customer information for analysis and reporting. You need to recommend a solution to automatically copy new information from the data sources to the data lake storage account by using extract, transform, and load, which is also called as ETL. The solution must minimize administrative effort. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are Azure Data Factory, Azure Data Explorer, Azure Data Share, Azure Data Studio. And friends, the correct answer here is Azure Data Factory. Azure Data Factory, also called as ADF, is the ideal solution for this scenario as it provides a scalable ETL, which is extract, transform, load service for moving data between multiple on-premise and cloud data sources. Next question. You have an Azure subscription. You need to deploy an Azure Kubernetes service solution that will use Windows Server 2019 nodes. The solution must meet the following requirements. Minimize the time it takes to provision compute resources during scale out operations. Support auto scaling of Windows Server containers. Which scaling option should you recommend? Your options are Kubernetes version 1.20.2 or newer. Virtual nodes with virtual kubelet ACI, cluster autoscaler, horizontal pod autoscaler. Friends, cluster autoscaler is the most suitable option in this case. It automatically adds or removes nodes in the AKS cluster based on workload demands, ensuring the necessary compute resources are available during scale out operations and it minimizes the time to provision new compute resources by scaling the entire node pool, including Windows Server nodes when needed. Folks, virtual nodes with virtual kubelet ACI cannot be chosen as the correct answer in this case as virtual nodes only support Linux nodes, whereas in this question, we need to support auto-scaling for Windows nodes. There is a link on your screen. If you would like to understand why cluster autoscaler has been chosen as the correct answer, then go through the link and read more about it. Question number 65. You have an Azure subscription. You need to recommend an Azure Kubernetes solution that will use Linux nodes. The solution must meet the following requirements. Minimize the time it takes to provision compute resources during scale out operations, support auto scaling of Linux containers and minimize administrative effort. Which scaling option should you recommend? Your options are horizontal pod auto scaler, cluster auto scaler, virtual nodes, virtual kubelet. Friends, in this question, we are talking about Linux container. So following up on explanation provided in the last question, you will use virtual nodes. With virtual nodes, you have quick provisioning of pods and only pay per second for their execution time. You don't need to wait for Kubernetes cluster autoscaler to deploy VM compute nodes to run more pods. So folks, I hope you now understand what is the difference between the two questions that we just had. One of the question was focused around Windows nodes and the other one is focused around Linux node. That is the reason why the right choice has changed in both the questions. Next question. Your company plans to deploy various Azure app service instances that will use Azure SQL databases. The app service instances will be deployed at the same time as the Azure SQL databases. The company has a regulatory requirement to deploy the app service instances only to specific Azure regions. 
the resources for the app service instances must reside in the same region. You need to recommend a solution to meet the regulatory requirement. And the solution you choose is, you recommend using the regulatory compliance dashboard in Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Does this meet the goal? You need to tell whether this solution is right or wrong. And friends, this is an incorrect solution. The regulatory compliance dashboard in Microsoft Defender for Cloud helps monitor and assess compliance with various industry standards, but it does not control or restrict the deployment of resources to specific regions. It is primarily used for reporting compliance and providing recommendations to improve the security posture of your environment. You should use Azure policy to meet the given requirement. So folks, we have almost covered 70 questions in the series till now. So if you are someone who is looking to get PDF access to all the questions that we have covered in the series till now, then you can gain access to the PDF by joining the channel as a gold member. You just need to email us at devopsup2023 at gmail.com requesting your PDF copy once you have taken the membership. So now friends, if you are someone who doesn't like to commit to a monthly membership, even though you have option to cancel it at any time, we do have one-time payment options as well. Just email us at devopsup2023 at gmail.com requesting further information about the one-time payment options. Question number 67. You plan to move a web app named App1 from an on-premise data center to Azure. App1 depends on a custom COM component that is installed on the host server. You need to recommend a solution to host App1 in Azure. The solution must meet the following requirements. App1 must be available to users if an Azure data center becomes unavailable. Costs must be minimized. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are in two Azure regions, deploy a load balancer and a web app. In two Azure regions, deploy a load balancer and a virtual machine scale set. Deploy a load balancer and a virtual machine scale set across two availability zones. In two Azure regions, deploy an Azure traffic manager profile and a web app. Folks, web apps do not support COM components, so you can straight away rule out option A and option D. Both of the remaining options satisfy first requirement of high availability in case of Azure data center failure, but we need to minimize the costs as well based on the second requirement. So we will eliminate option B here. Option C would be ideal as we are just looking for redundancy in case of data center failure and not region failure. Folks, if you are liking the content, do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe the channel. Question number 68. You are developing a sales application that will contain several Azure cloud services and handle different components of a transaction. Different cloud services will process customer orders, billing, payment, inventory, and shipping. You need to recommend a solution to enable the cloud services to asynchronously communicate transaction information by using XML messages. What should you include in the recommendation? Your options are Azure Notification Hubs, Azure Service Fabric, Azure Queue Storage, Azure Data Lake. Folks, the most suitable option for enabling asynchronous communication between the given services is Azure Queue Storage. Azure Queue Storage allows decoupled services to communicate asynchronously by using a message-based architecture, and it supports plain text messages, including XML formatted messages, making it suitable for this use case. So folks, that's all for this part of the series. We will be back soon with more such questions. So stay tuned and keep liking the content so it reaches the wider audience.